We are back at Bordeaux International Airport. This time we're picking up Dee, Sarah's mother. She's coming back to stay with us for a little bit. So we'll say hi, hopefully in a short time. Her flight should have landed sometime in the last 10 minutes. Fingers crossed. Well, we're back at Bordeaux Airport. We are. Guess who's arriving? Yeah. <laughs> who's coming this time? It's my mom. She's coming back. The return of the D. You guys will be so pleased, I know. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Hopefully she'll be out soon. Yeah. Oh, you're going to vlog her getting off the flight? Yep. Oh, <laughs> it's so good to see you. Hi, Steve. Hello. Oh. Oh. You made it. So we're in the weekly market in Exodai, and we've D has joined us, and we have a, a wonderful friend who came over from uh, Vancouver who is interested in moving to France. So this is Fiona. Hello, Fiona. <laughs> Enjoying some uh, free samples from the uh, with olive. It's always lovely to have uh, the market come back to life again. It, this seems to be the first sort of spring one. Oops. That's good. Ah, that's good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We've come to get another brocotte because, you know, it's no. what you do on a Sunday. Um, but this time in saint jean de Cole, um, which is not far from the chateau, fortunately. Uh, it's the first time we've been to the market here. A lot of stalls are familiar. We're seeing, we're starting to see them more and more often. But um, yeah, it's such a beautiful little town. It's a gorgeous day. So we'll see what we can find. Yeah, it's one of the official Pubo village, which mm -hmm. I know is one of mom's favorites. So what do you think so far, mommy? Oh, the streets walking in are so pretty. You could stop every five minutes and take another photograph. It's, yeah. it's so interesting. Yeah. Very pretty. Good. Well, what have just, you got, mommy? It's a feast for the eyes. Let's look at the... Isn't this pretty? I don't know what the logo is in the middle, but it looks almost like an angry seahorse or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a very pretty pattern though. Yeah, isn't it lovely? What have you got, Mummy? For picnic baskets. Oh, that's very pretty. Isn't that? And there's quite a bit, and I think it's a Euro 45. I think with that and what you have at home, we have plenty. What do you yeah. see for the picnic that's baskets? That's very pretty. Isn't that very gorgeous? Pretty. You can always make it into napkins later. But yep. this, I look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. This is reversible. Look oh, at that. Oh, that's it. gorgeous. And it's roses. Look. I just I love oh that. Oh my gosh, that is just stunning. That's beautiful. Look at it. You could make runners with that or a Is it upholstery for, weight? It's all yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, it is. For a little chair, so isn't that beautiful? Oh, that'll go nicely, honey. I like it. Yeah, you like very, it? very pretty. Okay. okay, we're having that. Mum spotted this little rocking couch, little rocking banquette, which I think with a cushion out on the terrace might be really pretty. Look at it. Oh. Oh. That's very sweet. Oh, you're on camera. Oh, I, I thought I was looking at the son. No, no, no. Oh, I'm looking at the daughter instead. That's right. Okay. Oh, well played. I Got see what it. you did there. Yes, yes. Um, so we are up in the sewing room, as you might have guessed from, you know, the cupboard behind us. And we are working on a pelmet for the petite trauma. 
and now a bedspread. So here's what we're talking about. Uh, we're thinking that perhaps a runner, which matches the curtains yep. on the bottom of the bed, a bed skirt, do you call that? I don't know. Yeah. A little thing on the bottom. Um, and if we have it hang down a little bit, we're going to mat pattern match to have it hang long, to have it be long enough. Oh, you know, that's my favorite. Which is highly technical as far as I'm concerned, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, and yeah. And then we found this upstairs. Oh, Sarah has a wonderful stash. So because this is going, this material is also going to be the pelmet over the curtains in the bedroom, yep. the draperies, we just wanted to do it simply um, and not do, you know, very ornate thing. But look at this gorgeous um, trim, which can go on the bottom edge of the pelmet, which, and this color is the same as the fabric you've used to decorate right? the bed when you replace that. There's so a I certain think... friend who I have to thank for this again, the oh. same friend who gave us the material. Oh. So it's absolutely gorgeous. And look how much there is. Yeah. And I, I just, I love it. And it's all put together. So this is all stitched. And then you just, it's fascinating to me because I haven't <laughs> seen this and you take it out and then look, this beautiful little fringe is left. Isn't that delicate? It's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, a roaring 20 set. <laughs> Party okay. starts later. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because there's the bottom of her head right there. So right. actually if we went to the bottom of her head here, would that be a pattern repeat? No. That's... Yes. But it's in the wrong direction, right? Because right. if we want to go, we want the pattern to match lengthwise because we're going to add selvage okay. to selvage basically. Right. So we're not going to pattern match top to bottom. We're going to pattern match left to right. So you can cut your first 36, right? Because we want our overall size to be 36 inches because that yeah. works out with the so amount of material that, first, that we have left. Then cut another piece 36 and... No. No. So you're gonna cut your first 36. Okay. Then you're gonna take this material that's left. Yes. And you're going to figure out where the pattern match is on the other side. Is there an assistant here? Because I, I am your assistant, money. Can we just stop and cut the first 36? Okay, cut the first 36 good. and we'll go from there. Right. All right. Oh, look. Oh, mummy, what have you done? You've done it perfectly. Holy snapping. I mean, it's quite amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm what? pretty sure no one will be offended by snapping. We're going to be cutting off some of the length that way so we can use the length we cut off that way for the pillow, right? I'm sorry, you lost me at cut off. Oh dear, all right. Oh, this is, we haven't, okay, we're only losing that much on the bottom, perfect. Yeah. So if we're just making a little, yes, there's enough for a lumbar pillow. But what I'm saying is we're gonna, this overall length will now be 280. We don't want an overall width of 280. We want an overall width of about 200. Stay with me, mummy. So we can use the extra 80 centimeters that we're gonna lop off that end to make the pillows to zhuzh it up. Yeah. Yeah, stay of with course. me. Mommy. Stay yes. with me. That works. So this is fun because this is a non-symmetrical pattern repeat. So my other one, I had like the same pattern left and right, and it was easy to draw a line up the middle and get them to match. But here, it's slightly off from the selvage. So the, the distance of this pattern on this side is slightly different than the distance of pattern on this side. So we're just going to mark We've drawn our matching line on this side and we're going to mark the same spots on here so we can join them up and then hopefully pin them with a little folding back on this side. You with me, mommy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so where's our, where's our next matching point? All right. So I'm wondering, look at this here. Yeah. So what about a, a couple of leaves there? Right. It's just that one coming out there. Yeah. That yeah. one coming out there and just right through the end of it. Right. It's and then the this one spot. here, there's two little ones hanging down. It's right between the two little ones. Okay. All right. We're playing Connect the Dots now. Got it all lined up for me? Well, just a sec. Because I... I, it's hard to hold and blog and draw at the same time. So. Okay. All right. I think you're close. Close, but no banana. My ball was only off by half a centimeter. I don't want to play the mother card, but... <laughs> We're having an argument about precision here. Mum <laughs> thinks that if we had lined up the selvages, it would have been good enough because she was only off by a half a centimeter. And then I'm saying, but you'd be off by a half a centimeter. 
I'm trying to do thread for thread patch pattern matching here. Fine. I mean, this is not haute couture, but I'm, you know, trying to up my skills. You were very close. I will give you yeah. your very close. And you're feeding me, so I'm gonna go with your plan. <laughs> All right, we're testing. And one, two, here she goes. There's the middle. Okay. And this is the middle of the exquisitely matched part, <laughs> may I just say. Oh my gosh, it's uh, very generous. Yes, I think maybe slightly more generous than we want. Oops. So if we take just enough off to have a pillow, well, this is the question. Do we put the immaculate seam down the middle or off to one side to maximize the leftover material to do pillows? See, I think it should just be to the top of the uh, board there. I agree. Just do the top you? of the running board. I agree. That okay. would be perfect. In which case... There, by the time you hem it, you're there. That looks the best. Okay. So there's, wait a minute. Oh. I say this is very exhausting work, I have to tell you. All right, okay. I got the camera, don't you worry. Yeah, you, yeah. you hold that. Don't I got that. that. I'm really good at that yeah, part. Okay. Yeah. This is so beautiful. I like the proportion of the 36 on the bed. I think that's nice. Yeah. As far as nice little coverlet. Goes, in my world, it should be in the middle. I know, but then it's fabric. A lot of wasted fabric. Yeah. But what else are you going to do with it besides make pillows? You make pillows. <laughs> no, you don't want too big of pillows. It's a little bed. Apparently, we're going to have a pillow fight. <laughs> <laughs> I and wonder if we put, do we put some sort of detail over top of the seam? Do we no, cover it in not something? No, if it's offset. No, no, no. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, and then do a matching one on the other side is what I meant. So that they would be symmetrical. Well, I don't think so. No? No. No. All right. That's you get, kibosh that. This is a little, well, it's a little room and it doesn't right. want a whole, I don't think it wants a whole lot in my opinion. But there you are. She says standing in a room full of tapestry, toile, and jacquard. It's still a, a, it's <laughs> called the petite chambre. I rest my case. So then we could do one of these fancy little things where you just pull it back, in which case you're not going to see the seam either. Okay. But I can tell you don't like that at all. It's not, it's not straight and flat. <laughs> it's not right angles, mummy. Oh. The, math of, the mathematician in me is going right angles, right angles. I love this, though. I yeah. think it's so beautiful. I think it looks lovely. I, I All right. Just, I think it it makes... I know this is a small room, and I know it's a lot of different pattern, but when you're physically standing in here, I have to say it's, it's cozy, it's warm. It makes you want to lie down and have a nap. Or yes. A I think it's just... It's a really snuggly nice. room. It's a snuggly room. It is. Yeah. And last night I managed to get the pelmet up. So I finished that yesterday afternoon and just uh, got our trusty giant ladder, which I am very brave on now, and got that uh, pelmet up. And I think it looks quite nice with that fringe. Adds a little detail, nothing too structural about it, but uh, I think it looks really sweet. I've had what I'm hoping is a, a good brainwave uh, to sort of get this sign finished off. So I want to add some paint uh, into the letter forms themselves, um, but I don't want to brush it in necessarily because I'd rather try and stop it from going onto the walls of the, uh, the actual letters and just sit at the base. So what I went and got was a little syringe. This is actually for cake toppers. Um, and it just pulls back and I'm going to use that to take in some of this paint and then hopefully inject the paint in so that it creates a nice layer of color. I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see how it works. Who knows? Hopefully it was a stroke of genius and not failure. I think I found a way of 
getting the paint into the corners once I get a, a volume of it in. And it's a nice, easy solution, toothpicks. So I'm gonna try another letter and we'll see how this goes. One of the primary reasons I wanted to do this this way was to sort of fill in um, a lot of the imperfections that occurred when I was carving it out. Um, you know, the Dremel bit goes up and down a little bit and, you know, it's not a perfect base, but hopefully the paint will just even things out a little bit if I put enough volume of it in. And just use this, push it into the corners. Okay, well, I'm having some success with filling in these letters. There's definitely gonna need some cleanup afterwards with the uh, sanding paper, but that's all right. That was part of the plan anyway, but it's certainly making the letters stand out a lot better. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's hiding all of the imperfections of all of the, the carved out wood. Things like this, you know, where you see it gouged a little bit here and there deep into the uh into the cut so yeah i think that will uh you know hide all manner of sin uh, i'm going to let this dry and see how it goes and then i will finish it up once it's dry all right everyone it's time i come clean i uh maybe dodged around the truth a little bit when we were redoing this room. So I did get all the curtains done and we renovated and we showed you guys the gorgeous sunlit shots. And that was really the root of my little cover up was that we really wanted the sunshine to be glinting off this gorgeous fabric. And so we might've rushed things a little bit. And what I didn't tell you was the pelmets weren't done. So when I hinted last time that pelmets have been the bane of my existence, it's because in the several months since we've done this bedroom, I still hadn't got around to replacing the pelmets. So I've done that now and I'm gonna get the other ones up. So I think there was uh, someone who said that the tape, even though it was a tape used to hold up roof, wasn't going to work. I would like to say, sir, you were correct. So we will get some Velcro under there. I will finally tidy up the little strings from the end of the gathers, which I hadn't done before. And you can see all those flaying in the wind there. And then I will replace these other two pelmets. They're not as, um, they don't have the ruffle like this one because we don't have to worry about opening the doors quite as wide. The windows are a little deeper set uh, compared to the door. So we've got a little more room to open. So I just made a slightly deeper pelmet with a bit of trim. So we'll get that up and then this bedroom will truly be done. Well, truly done until I can recover these chairs because right now they're just blending with the wall a little bit. I like the general size and shape of them, but we've got to get, uh, got to get them recovered. All right, super brave, here I go. I mean, it's not so much that I have a fear of heights. It's, it's more the fear of falling. As they say, it's not the long drop, it's the sudden stop at the end. But this bad boy needs to come down. And I think it's just on with Velcro. Yep. So let's get that down. Don't mind the dust. 
So are you re-gluing it or what's the... Well, it's not like it's... I'm gonna have to because look. What? It's like the back and the front of the Velcro has come off. Oh. Instead of just separating and leaving the backing up there, the whole thing is just peeled off because it's, what, 40 years old? Hello, oh. Mama. Hello. You're very far away. I've called in the big guns just to finish the corners. But other than that, we now have three pelmets. They're looking amazing, though. Well done. <laughs> so I tried to make the two window pelmets the same length as the door pelmet with the ruffle. Again, we need the ruffle so that the doors can open because the doors aren't as deep set as the windows are. So I'm kind of getting around a bit of engineering and trying to make everything balanced. A little tricky. Well, thanks to all the lovely rain and now sunshine, our rose bush is finally blooming. There's the first full bud. But boy, there's going to be lots of others. And speaking of color, I mean, look at the wisteria. It is just stunning right now. And the bees are certainly enjoying it, I can tell you. You can actually hear them buzzing.